So we've had the Razer Blade 18 for a little while now and I've been absolutely loving this laptop. We've already done the review, we've already tested it against the Alienware M18. Now this laptop does come with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD, so that may be enough for some of the people out there. But as always, I want to upgrade this laptop to as much as I can get away with to hopefully help you if you want to upgrade your laptop to get the best performance you can out of this machine. So this laptop has two DDR5 RAM slots. So today I'm going to be testing my 96 gigabyte 5600 Crucial kit and my 64 gigabyte Fury kit. Now the Fury kit is slightly faster, but the 96 gigabyte has more capacity. So then we're going to decide whether it's worthwhile for you to go for the faster kit or the higher capacity kit. Now, because we've got two M.2 Gen 4 SSD slots in here that hopefully accept double-sided, we're going to test the SN850X, which is double-sided drive, as well as the new 990 Pro 4 terabyte single-sided drive as our primary drive. And then I'm putting in a more cost-effective 4 terabyte Lexar drive as our secondary drive, because it's going to be a games drive anyway. I don't need quite the same high performance as either the 990 or the SN850X. So stick around, let's open it up and start testing away. Before I open up this laptop, I want to make sure I've got everything prepared. Now because I'm upgrading the RAM and the SSDs, I want to make sure I've cloned the primary drive to my new drive to make sure everything is in order before I even open it. Now all these primary drives, such as the Samsung 990 or the Western Digital SN850X, provide free cloning software for their drives. And I suggest in most cases you do actually clone the original laptop hard drive to your new SSD because it keeps all of your programs, all of your documents, all your games, plus all of the stuff that came originally installed on the laptop onto the new drive. And it's by far the quickest and easiest way to get your new laptop up and running. Now, in case you haven't used cloning software before, I'm gonna put a link to both the Samsung and the Western Digital cloning guide in the description down below in case you want to see that, but it is incredibly easy. And as this laptop have two SSD drive bays, you could open this laptop, place your new SSD in a secondary bay and clone straight from one drive to the other. That is the, probably the fastest way to do it, but it does mean opening your laptop twice. I'm very lazy, so I've actually got myself a USB-C caddy. And what this basically does, it allows me to put my primary drive into the caddy and I can actually clone it before I've even opened my laptop, so I'm all ready. Now this wasn't even overly expensive, and if you want one of these, I will put a link in the description down below. Now, once you've cloned your drive successfully, shut down your laptop. Make sure it's powered off. Do not leave it in sleep because we're now going to open it up. Move your laptop over to your workspace and turn it upside down onto your desk. Now, I personally always put a mouse mat on the desk before I put this down on top of it because you don't want to scratch your beautiful razor blade lid because these are expensive laptops. Removing the base plate off of the razor blade 18 is incredibly easy, but I do recommend you get yourself a decent toolkit because the screws can be quite soft. Now I'm using the iFixit Electronic Essentials Toolkit. It's not overly expensive. It's got all of the bits that I need regularly for all the laptop repairs and maintenance that I do. And it won't break the bank. I absolutely love this toolkit. So now just use a T5 driver and remove the eight T5 screws and gently prise that base plate away from the laptop. Don't yank that base plate off, just gently pry it slightly forward and upwards and it will come away nicely and place it to the side of the laptop. Now with the innards of your laptop exposed, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unplug the battery cable. Now removing the battery cable is very straightforward, but make sure you take your time and don't yank on the cable. I usually use a fingernail and a pry tool to wiggle that cable out. Don't just grab the back of the cable and pull it because you can pull the cable away from the connector and that's the last thing you want to do with your expensive laptop. So with the battery cable removed, the laptop is now safe to work on. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually change the RAM in this Blade 18. Now I tested the Crucial 96 gigabyte kit and the Fury 64 gigabyte kit in this laptop. The RAM is easily accessible. You just lift the little flap that hides the actual RAM slots themselves, pull the two retention clips and the old RAM stick will pop up, slide it out, take your new RAM stick, make sure you've got it oriented the right way. You'll notice by the notch needs to match the notch in the actual slot. Slide it in at 45 degrees and push it down until it clips in place. You'll hear those retention clips click into place. Do that for the other chip, and that's your RAM installed. Now I tested the laptop with both these new RAM kits installed, and the good news is they both work absolutely perfectly in this Razer Blade 18, but the bad news is they max out at 5,200 megahertz, and the stock 32 gigabyte kit ran at 5,600 megahertz. So that's quite disappointed that we don't get the full bandwidth on this RAM. 
Uh, the Razer Blade 16 allowed me to run it at 5,600 megahertz, so I don't know why this Blade 18 is not. But as disappointing as that is, not running it at 5,600 megahertz, 5,200 megahertz isn't that bad. And the good news is when I checked the benchmarks, it's running the RAM at tighter timings than its 5,600 rated speed, which still led to some great benchmarks. Now, speed-wise, I still recommend the Fury 5600 megahertz 64 gigabyte kit. That's the fastest kit we've ever tested, and we absolutely love that kit. The 96 gigabyte does have slower RAM timings, so it does run a little bit slower than that Fury 64 gigabyte. But if you need more than 65 gigabytes, that is currently your only choice. And in all honesty, the majority of users will never use even 64 gigabyte, let alone 96 gigabyte. So you will know if you need more than that 64 gigabyte for your apps. Now moving over to the SSD with our clone drive ready, I'm gonna remove the original one terabyte drive. And to do this, I'm gonna need a Phillips 00 screwdriver. You will notice there is a sticker over the screw holding the SSD in place. You will not void the warranty by taking the screw out as long as you don't do any damage to the laptop in the process. Just put your screwdriver through the actual sticker and unscrew it. Then you can just lift the drive and slide it out from the slot. I'm gonna take my new 990 Pro drive and put it back into the slot and screw it down. Now the good news is with this Razor Blade 18, the SSD slots are raised quite high away from the motherboard, meaning that you can use double-sided SSDs in both the primary and the secondary slot, giving you a theoretical 16 terabytes worth of SSD space in this laptop. Now I say theoretical because at the moment, eight terabyte SSDs, the cost is astronomical and it was just too rich for me to get two eight terabytes in. So I'm gonna stick with two four terabytes, which is pretty much enough space for me at the moment. And then as they drop down in price, I will pick up some eight terabyte drives. Now my Samsung 990 Pro 4 terabyte is a single sided SSD. We've only just got it in and I'm gonna use it as the primary, but the Western Digital SN850X double sided drive fits perfectly. But you will notice that there are sometimes a foam pad on these razor blades in the SSD slot. If you're using a double-sided drive, you will need to remove that foam pad for that drive to sit nicely into the slot. But if you're using a single-sided, like this SN990 Pro, you can just leave that foam pad in place and sit that drive down. Now in my secondary slot, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Lexar NM794 terabyte drive. This is probably the best performing entry-level drive that we've tested. It comes in pretty much one of the cheapest drives and yet still has incredibly good performance, more than enough for a games drive that I'm gonna be using it for. And I'm using my more expensive Samsung 990 Pro as the primary drive, which will obviously run my OS and my main apps. So that's it, I've upgraded the SSD, I've upgraded the RAM. All that's left to do is to plug in my battery, screw back on the base plate and boot back into Windows and we're done. You will probably get a prompt telling you the clock is out of date because you've obviously unplugged the battery just okay to that, back into Windows, there's nothing else to do. Because we've cloned our SSD, it's automatically activated, and Windows is working activated as we'd expect. So there we go. I'm now rocking 64 gigabytes of fast Fury RAM in my Blade 18, and my two four terabyte drives. This is now gonna be perfect for my mix of video editing, development, and all the games I store, because obviously games are getting bigger these days. And as I said before, I probably will upgrade to eight terabyte drives as they come down in price. Now, as usual, if you've got any questions or any just general comments, put it down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.